it was tough for Whitney because these guys would say, you know, you're just a honky. You ain't black. Who you think you are? Some kind of civil rights leader. I think Roy got through it more easily than Whitney because Roy was just older and uh, he was set in his ways. He wasn't going to change. Whitney's work really required much more interface with white people and powerful white people. Um, uh, people who ran businesses, who he was trying to get to change their practices. And um, so, you know, he can be jumping around saying about uh, honkies are going to hell and stuff like that. He, and I think the psychic pressure on him was, was very significant. But he never showed it. He was very cool. I thought a lot of the revolutionary stuff was excessive, but um, that's the nature of, that's the nature of, of people coming out of oppression and, and, uh, and being furious at what the culture had done to their own souls. A lot of people who became leaders of one type or another in the 60s who wanted it to all be about them. Whitney was not one of those people. Civil rights people would come and they would want to talk, some of them want to talk, morality. Well, the federal government did not think it needed lessons in morality. It was what programs are not working, what kind of programs do we need, um, what kind of support can you drum up out in the country for it. I mean, in that sense, they, they really did very much like to talk to Roy and to Whitney. Look around at all the black CEOs and, and the black officers in, in, in corporate America. I think that's a large part of Whitney's legacy, that he persuaded businessmen and women at a time when they were persuadable that it was an absolute craziness and waste of, of, of talent and uh, to try to run America's business without black people participating. A whole set of repository of human talent out there that's just not being tapped.